Hi friends! Today is going to be my wrap up for the month of June. In June I read 18 books for a total of 5,062 pages. I was doing both the Avengers Initiative Reading Challenge as always, the Whatever-a-thon, and also let's see what else happened. Oh the Summer Scare Readathon, also Queer Lit Readathon. So there was like a bunch of readathons and a bunch of things going on. So I read a lot of books this month. Anything that I have a dedicated review video for I will link in the description box down below and we'll do that and talk about that rather than talking about it here because you know if there's a whole review video for it we probably don't need to review it here. Okay as always let's start with DNFs. Um, I will go from the lowest rated to the highest rated books for the month and DNFs are first. So the first DNF that I had that I DNFed at 5% was Sloppy Firsts by Megan McCafferty. I got this as an ARC from Wednesday Books. As always um, all of my full Goodreads reviews will be linked down below for these. Sloppy First was one of the first things I picked up this month so I don't remember exactly what made me be like ooh I'm out. Uh, but I know that there was like some fat phobic and some um, eating disorder talk like making fun of it like not making fun of eating disorders but like making light of having an eating disorder it was not it was not good so I DNF'd that really quickly I also DNF'd I believe in a thing called love by Maureen Goo at about 57 percent um I just gave up because it was completely too wacky it's kind of got like a k-drama vibe to it which is what the author was going for but it didn't work for me. If you want to know more about that book in particular it was our book club pick for AuthorTube chat this month and so Kate and I did discuss that in our live show and I'll link that down below if you want to know more of my full thoughts on that. Also I have a reread for this month and that was Blood Witch by Susan Dennard. This I believe I originally rated a 4.75 out of 5 stars. Uh, I love this series. I think this is my third time rereading this book. I love the whole series. The series follows Safi Azult, Aedwan, and Merrick, and there are some other main characters that we do see as the book goes on, but it starts off following those four main characters, and they live in this world where there are people who have like a witch mark, they have magic, they can control different elements or different things, and they go on this adventure trying to save themselves and then inadvertently end up trying to kind of save their world and there's a lot of political drama and battles and oh the plot twists there's just so much in this series and if you haven't picked up Truth Witch yet you absolutely should because it's fantastic. Then we get into the new books that I finished. First is going to be This Is How You Lose the Time War. I did not write down who that's by. That's on me. I give that a 2.25 out of 5 stars. I really liked the end of it. It was the book club pick for Avengers and Ship Reading Challenge this month which is probably the only reason why I finished reading it. Also because it was very short so I just kind of pushed myself through so I could use it for all of the challenges. It was very confusing. I'm not really sure what was actually happening for the first 75% of the book maybe 90% of the book. I had no clue what was happening um, which I think is kind of the point but it just it did not work for me. The very end of it was interesting. You finally get like some more information about the world. Not a lot but a little bit and um, kind of just the way that it plays with things uh, was done very well at the end I, I think. But um, the world building though not complete enough to make me feel good was interesting. I didn't I, I don't know it just it I know it's a book that a lot of people really love and I think if you love that kind of book where you don't need to know all of the details it could be a book for you. It's it's one of those things where you're either gonna love it or hate it and and I, I, I it just it didn't work for me. Then we have Spells Trouble by PC and Kristen Cass. I gave this a 2.25 out of 5 stars as well. This was an arc that I had I believe also from Wednesday Books. So this story follows twin sisters and they are from this family uh, this really long line of witches and they protect the city that they have developed uh, by protecting these five trees that form a pentagram around the the city that they live in and oh god 
I just... Here's the thing. This book, like the character work was good. I liked the characters and I liked some of the magic aspects of it, but the um, pacing was really bad and it very much reminds me of their House of Night series, which if you don't know, um, the House of Night series, though I, I have my issues with it, I also have a love for it for reasons. And it is the only tattoo on my body is a quote from the House of Night series. So like I have an attachment to it for sure. And I think this book was very similar. And I think for the lack of amount of things that happened, there was very little plot in this book. And that is like my biggest complaint about the House of Night novels was that there were like 12 books, but it probably could have been condensed down to five or six. And the story would have been very similar, but things would have actually been happening. And I'm not signing up for another series like that. I'm not going to continue on with the series. I, as much as I love PC and Kristen, and I appreciate them for all of the work that they've done and how much like, emotional attachment I have to that first series. I can't, I can't, I can't do this to myself as a 34 year old woman. Um, again, not the target demographic. So maybe people who are in that target demographic would love it. But for me, just just not enough plot. So moving on. We then have Beyond the Ruby Veil by Mara Fitzgerald. I give this a 2.75 out of 5 stars. This is one of the first ones that we're talking about today. That's from the Summer Scare Readathon. There is an entire reading vlog for that. So I'll link it in the description box down below. This book follows Emanuela and she is getting married to her best friend. He's gay. She's gay. Why are they getting married? It's a political thing. They live in this world where they don't have any water so they have like this water witch who converts blood of people who are marked um, as they slowly die and turns their blood into water and she has been and Emanuela has been marked by that since she was very young, but she's been hiding it. And on her wedding day, the Water Witch sees her and she knows she's got the mark. So she takes her to her tower and then they fight and then Emanuela kills her and then she has to figure out how to get water for her people. That's in the synopsis on the book. Again, I won't go too far into this because I do have an entire reading vlog for it. So if you want to know more, you can go there. But basically, um, the things you need to know is that the world building is great. The characters are shit okay. I don't mean that in a disrespectful way. I just really don't like the main character and like I'll explain it. It's explained more in the big video. Okay, cool. I then read the second volume of Spell on Wheels. Um, I know one of the authors and or artists is Kate Leaf. I don't remember. There's a couple others. I gave that a 3.5 out of 5 stars. I like the artwork but I didn't like the plot as much as I did the first volume and it didn't I don't know it didn't really make a whole lot of sense it was very weird in the direction that it went though I feel like that's kind of common in a comic but either way it was okay but it wasn't great and I enjoyed it but it could have been better if there is another volume I'll read it continuing on in the land of 3.5s Lost in the Neverwoods by Aiden Thomas this book follows Wendy who her and her two younger brothers go missing and they're gone for about six months and Wendy returns her brothers do not and then we're down the road a few years later and Wendy starts seeing someone named Peter who she says remembers her and she thinks he might be from this place that she used to be when she was missing and if you can't tell it's a Peter Pan retelling. I didn't love this. I liked the characters. I think the character work was done well. Um, the world building was just okay. The pacing was just okay. What I find interesting about this book is that if I remember correctly and if my research has been done correctly because I someone told remi told me of this and I remembered that I had heard it and then I did more research on it but basically what I'm saying is is that I'm pretty sure that this is the first book that Aiden sold and they released Cemetery Boys first before this one. So I think this was technically his what should have been his debut. And that makes sense to me. I think that this reads like a debut novel. And that's okay. Like I know that I have enjoyed his work. I will continue to read his work. I'm not a huge Peter Pan fan. So if I had remembered that going into it other than like when I picked it up and started reading and I went oh Peter Pan got it. I'm not a huge Peter Pan fan. So like this story didn't really work for me. There is like a big plot twist but I feel like if you know anything about Peter Pan and you know like the lore of Peter Pan then you know what the plot twist will be. So like that didn't really impact me any. I don't know. It was just okay. It wasn't horrible. It wasn't my favorite thing ever. It was just okay. 
and that's okay. The last book in 3.5 land is Vampires Never Get Old by an amalgamation of authors because it is an anthology about vampires. Uh, there were some that I really loved, there were some I really didn't love. I in my Goodreads review listed all of the stories and then an individual rating for each of them if you want to know like which ones were my favorites, which ones I hated. Um, some had very interesting views on vampires and and I think definitely added to the vampire lore and the vampire conversation. I really liked the direction that some of them took and the things that they added to the lore. Um, I think that some of the better stories could be made into like a full fleshed out story, not necessarily with those characters, but maybe just that world um, and the way that vampires are viewed in that world. I think there could be more things from that. Speaking of, the Victoria Schwab in that book is being turned into either a movie or a TV series. So Apparently someone agrees with me. We then have Moxie, which I gave a 3.75 out of 5 stars. This book follows Vivian, who is in high school. She lives in this town where men are complete and utter assholes, and especially, you know, high school boys. So not really men, but high school boys. Um, they have like this list of voting system and and they have this thing where they like run around and goose you on the ass and like there's all kinds of weird things that these boys do that the faculty and the administration just completely overlook and don't pay any attention to and Vivian decides that she wants to fight back quietly and she makes this zine called Moxie and she makes this zine to kind of like find other girls like herself who are just tired of all of the bullshit and it just kind of goes from there. I have also watched the movie and I think if you're interested in the storyline that I think the movie did it better than the book did um, just for my own personal opinion and I think that's because while there is some diversity in here I think the movie does a better job of discussing um, the diversity aspect of it and I also think the movie does a better job of showing how much women in the black community have really done for feminism whereas this book doesn't really talk about it that much. I guess the movie doesn't really talk about it either but you can see it because you have like the new girl in school is black and she is the one that kind of gives Vivian the inspiration for starting the scene and she is the person who like really gets behind it and can, keeps you know even though she doesn't know that Vivian's the one making the zine, she definitely is the one that's kind of pushing that and making Vivian want to continue to do it. Um, I, I think the movie does a really good job of showing the work that black women have put into feminism, whereas the book, they're there, but it does more to discuss like the, the separation of the different races at their school. And they do kind of come together towards the end, but I, I don't, the book was okay. The movie was better in my opinion but I think if you I mean you could definitely watch the movie and read the book if you want um, but if you're interested in just like the plot line the movie's good. I also think the movie is really great um, like my nieces and nephews I have a couple of nieces that would read this that like to read but most of them are more movie watchers but that's a movie that I know that I can like have them sit down and watch and them get that feminist vibe that I think all of the girls should have and the boys as well. I, I guess it just depends on what you're looking for. Um, but I really like the characters. I think the characters were really well done. I think the love interest is better in the movie than in the books. I keep pointing in that direction because I watched it in the other room. So my brain's like the movie in there. I like the love interest better from the movie because it is someone that she's known her whole life whereas in the book it's someone new and it's like insta lovey and and I just I could live without it. I think it was done better in the movie than in the book. Um, but I just there's a lot of good things. The pacing was a little off and there's that. Okay let's stop talking about it. It's been 20 minutes now. I'm gonna go ahead and talk about all three of these even though they don't have the same rating. Um, the Sarah Normal series by Phoebe Rivers and they are books two, three, and four. I gave books two and three four stars and book four five stars. These were books that I read during the Summer Scare Readathon, so if you want to know full thoughts on those, you can find that in the description box down below. Those are really just like mid-grade spooky. They're about a girl who lives with just her father. Her mother died during childbirth. They live on the west coast. They move to the east coast. She starts to see more ghosts. It's not really super creepy, but it's got a little bit of spooky in it. They're low mid-grade in my opinion, but good series. Obviously from the four and five star ratings. Okay. We then have Horrid by Katrina Leno. I gave this a four out of five stars. This is again a book from the Summer Scare Readathon. It takes place as 
Jane lives on the west coast with her mother. Her father dies, they move to the east coast to live in her mother's old family home and it's possibly haunted. So if you want to know more of my full thoughts on this, read a thon blog. I also read The Ark for Ten Truths and a Dare by Ashley Elston. I gave that a 4.25 out of 5 stars. It is the follow-up to Ten Blind Dates, which I really loved. I didn't love Ten Truths and a Dare quite as much. There wasn't as much of like the family aspect that I really enjoyed in it, but it was still a really good story and a really cute romance, uh, cute rom-com. I just really like it. It follows the same like four main characters that you get in Ten Blind Dates. One of the girls finds out that she may not be able to graduate because she doesn't have uh, paperwork signed by a coach from a golf team and she it's graduation party week so like all of her friends have these graduation parties going on that her mom knows she's supposed to be going to and her mom has like a tracking app on her phone uh, while they're on vacation so she can see like what she's into which is fair um, you know when you leave your 17 year old home alone for a week and she enlists her cousin's help to take her phone, go to these parties so that her mom thinks that she's at these parties while she works off getting her paperwork signed so that she can graduate because I think she's actually a salutatorian, possibly valedictorian, but I think salutatorian, either way. Um, so she enlists her cousins to like go to these parties for her and it's like this whole thing because people have like swapped phones and they don't know whose phone numbers or who phone numbers and there's like all this stuff going on. It's a really good book. If you have read Ten Blind Dates, it's a Christmassy book and I highly recommend you read it at Christmas time because it is so very good and I definitely will be reading it this year at Christmas time. I've already reread it once this year. I reread it uh, like in the spring because I was gonna read this one and I wanted to remember the characters. Uh, but I definitely will probably pick it up. I definitely probably will pick it up again at Christmas time. She says definitely probably. We then have Summer Assault by Katrina Leno, which I also gave a 4.25 out of 5 stars. I read that during the Summer Scare Readathon. So again, link down below if you want to know more of my full thoughts on that. If you don't know, Summer Assault follows twin girls who are witches. They live on this very secluded island. There is a big touristy thing where they have this bird that comes to their island every year. So there's like all these bird heads and the bird kind of disappears. So there's like trying to figure out what happens to the bird. And then there's like the second half of the book has a completely different plot and it's crazy. Okay. So really good. Highly enjoy it. If you want to know more, check out the reading blog link down below. The next book is also part of the readathon and that was Geraldine's Alley by Becca C. Smith. If you want to know more of this, link down below. Becca's a fellow author tuber. This book follows Geraldine, who I believe is like 22 at the start of the book, and she lives with her grandmother. Her parents died very violently a few years prior, and she likes to be very secluded, likes to be by herself. Her friends are mostly book characters that have come to life in her brain, and this book just kind of follows her overcoming her fears and learning how to do things, um, even if you are afraid of something. So very good book. 4.75 out of 5 stars. Highly recommend. Check out the reading vlog. Moving on. We then have All Boys Aren't Blue by George M. Johnson. This was one of the ones that I read for the Queer Lit Readathon. There were a few of those in there that I didn't actually do a blog for that um, because I ended up not reading as many of the books that I had originally planned. It was a weird week for me. Um, All Boys Aren't Blue is a memoir by George M. Johnson that follows him coming to terms with and growing up being queer and black in his community. I try to treat memoirs the same as I treat poetry, um, which is like, does it make you feel something? Did it do its job? Where rather than like rating someone's life, which seems excessive, um, you know, did it make you feel something? Did it do its job? And I think that this book was done so impeccably. Um, I would love to read more from George M. Johnson, especially if he does like fiction, but I would read more of his nonfiction as well. His writing style is just gorgeously done. And I think that there are a lot of people that can really relate to the story. Not me, straight white girl from Whitesville. Um, but I think there are a lot of people that can relate to his story. And I think it's good that we have these kind of stories that young teens can relate to and that are important and and I just really loved it. I cried a lot. Um, just a very beautiful, heartfelt, heartwarming story. 
um, with some difficult moments, but it's just really good. I really enjoyed it, so highly recommend. I do want to mention it before we get to like the last book of the month. I also read The Stranger Game by Selen Busby this month, but I'm using this for a reading vlog for next month. So we're not going to talk about it today, but know that I did read it this month and I did include it in the stats for this month. We're just not going to talk about it right now because there's going to be a whole reading vlog with this in it and that just seems excessive. Okay. And the final book this month, which I have an entire reading vlog for just this one book, is Blood Like Magic by Lizelle Sanberry. I gave this a 5 out of 5 stars. This book follows Voya who comes from this long line of witches and essentially around the age of puberty they're all given this task to complete and whether they complete that task or not determines what their magic will be and if they'll have the magic and all that and Voya kind of freezes and doesn't make a decision and she's given a second chance but because it's her being given a second chance the stakes get upped quite a lot. So on one side of it it's that if she chooses not to take any action again then she will not have any magic and I believe everyone after her and their family line will not have magic. If she decides to take the challenge but fails then she will not have magic and everyone that's currently in her family will not have magic. And there's like some really high stakes that are put on top of that that we don't know about right off the bat. Um, they are like some further things later on. The challenge is basically that she has to kill her first love but she's never been in love so that makes the challenge even more difficult. So it's just like a whole thing from there. This story is amazing. I could spew about it for hours but I will not because I already did that in a reading vlog that I will link down below for you. Um, I just absolutely fucking love this story. Um, Lizelle is a fellow author tuber. I will link her down below as well um, if you want to check out her or any of her you know want to hear her talk about things and, and it's just this book was so good. Like so good. I love the characters. I love the world building. I love the genre mash. Like this book is everything. I just I love this book. I love this cover. I have a special colored spine edition that I got from Emboss and Spine. Like they're just so much that I love about this book and and I just I, I want to read more. I want there to be more. Where is the second book? I need it now, basically. I need it now. And I'm not gonna have it now, but I need it now. Okay. So these are most and or some of my books from June. It was a lot. I'm probably gonna have to reorganize all of my shelves to get all of these on there, which should be fun. If you've read any of these, if you have any comments, questions, or concerns, please leave them in the comments down below because that's why we're here is to discuss all these wonderful books. That is all I have for today. I post reading, writing, book, and planner related videos a couple of times a week. If you don't want to miss anything I have going in the future, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell down below. And until then, I will see you guys next time. Bye!